Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and our pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. It is what we are deemed to do. And we have a great lineup for you on this week. So excited about what we're going to share with you on this week some great things on today we're going to share with you created for the task and on tomorrow wednesday may the 11th we're going to share your conception has a purpose and on thursday we're going to share producing in the wilderness that's right so be sure to check out the lineup for this week once again today we're going to talk about created for the task and on wednesday may the 11th we're going to discuss your conception has a purpose and on thursday producing in the wilderness and let us not forget that we are going to Uh, just share with you components of a revival now the revival is going to start on tomorrow I'm sorry not tomorrow I'm days ahead May 12th it's going to start on Thursday May 12th through the 14th so that's Thursday Friday and Saturday in Swainsboro Georgia located at Faith Outreach Deliverance Church 216 South Green Street Swainsboro Georgia 30401 Apostle Naaman Wilson Jr. is the revivalist himself, along with Pastor Wilson of Charity Lighthouse of Faith. And so we do plan on having some audio and visual recording to share with you for that uh, revival. We do plan on streaming live. So uh, check out those services. Uh, So excited about that revival time in Swainsboro, Georgia. And uh, what else do I have for you? Uh, I do want to make mention that you can purchase a copy of our magazine, Hope and Truth, via Amazon. Uh, The May issue is up and available. So going forward, if you would like to order a copy of Hope and Truth magazine, or you can come to us directly, you can purchase via Amazon price per magazine is seven dollars plus your shipping and handling but may is already up and ready for you to order so excited about that Uh, this month we are looking at where truth develops the life of ministry so excited about what god has allowed us to do in this great work and you know what we are looking to do some partnerships we do have covenant partners in prayer But we are looking to expand Covenant Partners in Prayer by uh, partnering and we are just praying and asking God for directions on where and when and who we can partner with, where we could uh, send a monthly newsletter or perhaps a couple of issues of our magazine uh, to the an organization so we are looking to partner with a organization if you have any ideas that you'd like for us to uh, consider email us today at the balance of life one at yahoo.com and uh, we'll take a look so let's step over into this word because I am so excited you know I just absolutely love the word of God and we are going to take a look at Gideon created for the task have you ever felt a drawing a pulling to join with spearhead something that is so much bigger than you first of all you're thinking I'm not qualified to do that second (laughs) you're thinking no not me 
that's not my involvement that's not something I would do but you feel this drawing you feel this compassion towards something and no matter how you try to move away from it run away from it that pull is still there this is one way of how God invites us to a mission to an assignment to a work create it for the task so let's take a look over at uh, in the book of Judges the ch seventh chapter and I want to talk about Gideon created for a task it says then Jerubarau who is Gideon and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the well of Harad so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Moriah in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, mine own hand have saved me. So Gideon, who... Uh, as we look at, let's take a look at some of his background. Saw himself being pulled towards leadership to go to war, to fight on behalf of the children of Israel. That's over in Judges, the sixth chapter. Here again, the children of Israel were in trouble. As we often find ourselves also. It says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. Down to the six, it says, And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. When I say call to a task, I am talking about a work, an assignment, a mission that God has heard the cry he has seen a need in an area and he has come for those willing vessels who would be willing to go and to deliver what God would have him or her to deliver for those people and so growing up sometimes I don't know about you but there are some things I imagine myself doing. Writing was not one of them. Uh, ministering in front of people was definitely not one of them. By the time writing came into the component, I figured that I I would just write in and people could get the teaching and, and whatever I had to say from that component. Radio was never in the equation. Um, but growing up, I did have some desires and some dreams that I wanted to do. Um, but whenever there is a need, God grooms us. He knows us from the beginning and he already knows where he wants us placed. He waits for us, but the destination is already set. In the line of Gideon, Gideon is here. And the children of Israel have cried out to God because they have been impoverished. They've gone through for seven years. And their cry reached God. That he said, I'll send another deliverer. Isn't that wonderful about God? That when we repent from our heart, he will hear our prayer. He will become attentive to the words that we say. And, the, and it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. And I deliver you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drave them out from before you and gave you their land so the reason why God sent the prophet is because during this time stories of what God had done for the children of Israel were passed down 
well, can't you imagine that, uh, you know, how they play that game? You start a story at one end and you tell them to pass it down. Well, by the time it gets all the way or sometimes midway, the story has shifted and changed. Added to portions have been removed. And so not everyone fully probably believed or understood or heard what God had done for the children of Israel. Verse 10 says, And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites, but in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. We are not perfect, and we, we grow into spiritual maturity, and we do make errors. The thing is, is once we are uh, notified, I will say, of the errors that we have made, then we must make a conscience decision to repent and to do it no more. And so God was just reminding the people of why they were in the circumstance that they were in. He didn't say he would leave them there, but he reminded them. You ever got reminded why you were in a position or a circumstance that you were in simply because you did not obey? It doesn't mean that you have to stay in that position, but it is a reminder as to why you ended back into that place. I'm talking to somebody who has been created for a task. And so we cannot judge people because they keep falling into situations because once upon a time in our lives, we kept falling into some situations and some circumstances. And, and somebody else was saying, when are they going to learn their lesson? When are they going to get it? But you know what? We all learn by trial and error and one day we just come into this place of spiritual maturity of mental maturity emotional maturity that we will say you know what I, I'm just tired of that merry-go-round I, I, I think I want to get off now I I don't want to go in that kind of circle again that's maturity Verse 11 says, And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in Oprah that pertained unto Joaz the Abizarite and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites and so here they are in a position that whatever they got their hands on of of eating or even of value they had to hide it because their oppressor would come and steal it that is what the enemy does anytime you get anything of value which is the word of God he comes immediately to steal it to kill it and try to destroy it because he does not want you to receive that word in your heart and to begin to apply it in your life he does not want you to get a revelation and live by that word and so I could so very well see how threshing wheat which was something to nourish the body. They could also sell it to make money. It was precious. How they had to hide it and protect it. You must hide and protect the word that you receive. But God sent an angel. He first sends a prophet to remind the people. And then he sends an angel to sit amongst the people. Oh, this is such a wonderful thing. You were created for the task. And, and so sometimes you could sit in a place and God will send his anointing. He will send his presence. He will allow the anointing to fall upon the individual that is sitting in the midst or that will join you in conversation and will begin to give you some instruction that is known as the anointing that is known as the spiritual gift of prophecy it is sporadic prophecy it says here and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him the Lord is with thee thou mighty man of valor and Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all the, his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And so going through one thing after another, after another, after another, will put a person in a position of saying, 
Where are you, Lord? Where are you? I haven't felt your presence in a long time, Lord. Where are you? It puts a person that has gone through trial after trial after trial after trial to say, my God, are you with me? Or, or when am I going to get a break? Because it seems like every time I turn around, something is going on. It's in those moments. It's in those times that God will raise up a vessel. That's why I says you were created for this task because uh, what God is about to do in Gideon's life is he asked a question, but he was being presented to also provide an answer created for a task. I often say that whenever you have a question, there is a solution. The thing is, is am I a part of the solution or am I a part of the dismantlement am I going to add or am I going to delete am I going to increase or decrease what am I going to add am I a part of the solution or am I a part of the problem here Gideon is asking a question without realizing that he is about to be put in a position to give an answer he was created for the task the trials and tribulations that you have been facing and and people are coming to you and they are asking you questions they're looking for advice and and listen you have come across some huge things on your own and you are searching for an answer but I want to tell you that you know what the reason why you're searching for an answer and you cannot find it anywhere else is because God is about to propel you into a place to be the answer mm-hmm Oh yeah, that's why I always say if you are looking for change, you must look within because the change starts with you. Here Gideon says, let me read this again. And Gideon said unto him, O oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this burden befallen us? And where be all the miracles which our fathers told of us? Okay, so he's looking for a miracle and he's about to be one. Created for the task. You're looking for a miracle. You are literally looking. You are searching for a miracle. But you are about to be the miracle that you were searching for. I felt that. I, I, I love that. That is so rich. That is so powerful. That I, I, I must type that in. Uh, that's one of our let's get mo motivational. That's good. All right, let's get motivational. You are looking for a miracle. You're looking for one. You're looking for one. But I have news for you. You are the miracle you are looking for. You got to recognize yourself. All right. I just, when it hits me, I go ahead and write it then. All right. So let's get back to this. And we're over in the book of Judges. We're talking about Gideon. If you have tuned in, you have tuned into the balance of life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson. And I thank you so very much for joining us today. You know what? We have... Um, taken the liberty of putting on the Facebook page for Faith Outreach Deliverance Church a lineup of what we're going to discuss this week. I'm trying to streamline this thing, guys. I'm, I'm trying to get better at it five years in. And let me tell you, there is no perfect way. God keeps shifting us and we are staying in tune with the shift. We are staying in tune with what God is saying unto us in this season so I was prompted listen go ahead and put the line up for discussion of this week and I tell you it is absolutely wonderful we are going to share with you today we're already talking about created for the task and on tomorrow Wednesday May the 11th we're going to discuss your conception has a purpose and on Thursday we're going to talk about producing in the wilderness that's right so excited 
about that and don't forget there is a revival starting may 12th through the 14th details are up on our facebook page for the balance of life all right so love that quote we just wrote it is already up on the facebook page for the balance of life let's get motivational you are looking for a miracle but i have news for you you are the miracle that you are looking for you are the blessing that you are looking for looking all the way around you ever find yourself looking for something to help you get a job done without realizing that you have the tools already in you to get it done I I know I'm going to say that again. I'm going to try to slow that one down. You ever had a job to do and you started looking around for tools to do that job without realizing that the tools that you needed are in you. What you need is in you. I got to write that one down. Isn't it amazing that um, (laughs) as we're talking that uh, all of these nuggets fall, they fall right then. So let me type this one in and I'm still talking to you. God is good. So we're talking about Gideon and Gideon is asking some questions. He's looking for something. And what he is looking for, God is getting ready to produce it through him. Create it for the task. My God, that's good. So, he says, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, go in this day. Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? So what he's looking for, what he's searching for, that's just so good in my spirit that I have to say it again. What he is looking for, it's already in him. He is looking for God to come and do something, and God is going to do it through him. Oh God, I don't know about you, but that's good to me. You're looking for God to do something, but he's going to do it through you. You're looking for some deliverance to take place in the lives of your loved ones, but he's going to give you a word that is going to bring the deliverance. Isn't that wonderful? You are looking for a way out uh, concerning your finances. You need uh, you need some finances, but guess what? He's already given you tools. He's already put it in you. He's already given you the idea, the business idea. He's already given it to you. He's already given you a roadmap, but all you have to do is follow the instructions of the Holy Spirit and that way out that you're looking for, where you're saying, I need a financial blessing. Guess what? It's already in you. Follow the instructions of the Holy Spirit. And when you follow the instructions of the Holy Spirit, that which you're looking for, you will find sometimes we we want to look everywhere else without realizing that everything that we need is within us you know why because great is he that is in he that is in the world it's already in you now yes he will send someone along the way he has some people along the way to encourage you and to bless you he does but he's already gifted you. And so we cannot sit by idly and do nothing and wait for someone else to come and pave the way for us and bail us out. Why are they working? What you doing? What are you doing while they are working? Good question. All right, let's continue. Verse 15 says, and he said unto him, oh, my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. So he was looking for something. And when it was told that, guess what? It could come through you. He began to make excuses. Isn't that like us? 
full of excuses. But you're looking for something. You want it. But you're saying, oh, I can't do it. Oh, I'm about to step on some toes right now. Oh, I need some work done. I want somebody to come and do it. It's something you can do, but you just won't do it. And so, since you won't do it, it won't get done. Because you're looking for somebody else to come and do it for you. You have the ability. You have been equipped. You have been given the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding to do it. But you are just waiting for somebody else to do it. And and, and then when, when it's brought to the attention of oh, this is something you can handle, then you begin to make excuses as to why you can't do it. But we cannot complain about something and yet make excuses as to why we're not doing it. I know I just stepped on my own foot. Complaining about something, but yet we won't do it. So, when you find a problem, ask yourself, am I a part of the solution or am I the problem? I have a question. I have a need. I need something done. Am I the solution? Am I a part of the solution or am I a part of the problem? Being a part of the problem means that I am simply in the way. Means that guess what? I ain't gonna help solve. I ain't, I have nothing to add. I'm not even going to find a solution. That's just being in the way. Verse 16 says, And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. He wanted a surety that God was talking to him. If you're just tuning in, you're tuning in to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson, and I thank God for each and every one of you. We are looking to uh, become covenant partners with a agency, a organization. Uh, it is our way of giving back to the community. In this way, we would offer our monthly newsletter, Words of Encouragement. And we will also offer space to uh, have a ad in our monthly magazine hope and truth and so if you are interested in uh, being covenant partners with us here at angel ferguson ministries under the umbrella it is the balance of life it is under the umbrella of angel ferguson ministries please email us today at the balance of life one at yahoo.com if you know of a organization or even a ministry that will benefit with being covenant partners with us. It is free of charge to be covenant partners with us. We send out a monthly newsletter every first Monday of the month and we want to expand that area. We want to expand our network. So we'd love to partner with organizations, ministries, so that we can expand and just grow as it is the will of God. So I want to back up and I really want to hone in on having a job and looking everywhere else to get it done without looking within. So I'm putting this up as one of our um, one of our Let's Get Motivationals. You are the source. You definitely are. You are the source. You have been gifted. You have been gifted. You are the source. You are the source. Gideon had a question. It 
take a look at Gideon's question about deliverance. And who was going to deliver them? Gideon had a question about deliverance. And he was created. He, he didn't even know it. He was about to be invited to be the deliverer. That's good. Gideon had a question about deliverance and who was going to deliver them? Do you ever do that? God invited him to be the deliverer. That's good. So it's in you. It is definitely in you. Everything that you need, that it's in you. I got to go back to 13. It says, And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all the miracles which our fathers told us of? So Gideon had a question about deliverance and who was going to deliver them. And God invited him to be the deliverer. He was created for the task. my God take your time I'm telling you read Judges 6 chapter read about Gideon go further into the 7th chapter and we, we do have time to go over there take your time and read that God is good so let's move ahead. Let's move ahead with this because I want to get to certain portions of this. He asked for a sign that God was really talking to him. Verse 18 says, Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee, and bring forth my present, and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. Remember, as they were sitting under the tree, the angel came and sat bef with them and began to talk to them. So he asked him to stay there because I, I, I want to make sure I'm not losing my mind. I want to make sure that you're really here and present. I want to make sure that I heard clearly what you said. And guess what? That is okay. Verse 19 says, And Gideon went in and made ready a kid and unleavened cakes of an imp of flour. The flesh he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot and brought it out unto him under the oak and presented it. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cakes and lay them upon this rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes and there rose up fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the unleavened bread then the angel of the lord departed out of his sight yes i called you <laughs> yes i called you yes i gave you this assignment yes i created you for this task yes yes god called you he created you for that work he invited you the compassion that you feel, the drawing that you have encountered, you can't seem to get away every time you try to turn away from it. That work, that assignment, listen, it is there. You can't sleep at night. It keeps calling you. You, you keep seeing visions of how it could work. You keep getting instructions on how to, how to walk the path and, and how to build it, how to give it a solid foundation, how to grow it, how it's to expand it. You 
keep getting all of that. You don't want it, but it keeps coming to you. Listen, I came by to tell you that that is God saying, I called you. I created you for this task. You were created for this. Yes, you. Gideon said, you know what? My family poor. I can't do this. We've all done it. He's also said, I am the least in my father's house. But he was the one who had the issue. He was the one who had the complaint. He was the one who raised the questions. And God said, you know what? I can work through you because you're looking for a solution, my God. I can work through you because... You're looking for a solution. God can work through somebody. Oh God, that's good. I'm, I'm doing double duty today. God can work through somebody that is looking for a solution. Is that you? Is that you? He can work through somebody. He wanted a solution. Gideon wanted it a solution. God can work through through somebody who wants a solution. Because you're looking for an answer. You want something done. That's just good. That's just good all by itself. It really is. So, are you looking for a solution? Do you have questions? Are you, you know, are you saying, God, why this? And, and God, why that? And, and what's going on? And, and, and how are you going to work it out? How are we going to get through this? How are we going to get through that? What's the plan, God? What's the plan? What's the plan? Glory be to God. We Glory be to God. Glory be to God. God is good. God is good and he is worthy to be praised. So, if you find yourself asking questions, if you find yourself seeking and saying God how this going to work out you're asking a question and he is going to give you an answer if you're saying God what's the purpose he's going to reveal it if you're saying God how do how how are we going to come through with this with deliverance father God in the name of Jesus how He's going to give you a solution. I know Gideon didn't realize what he was doing. I know he was talking out of frustration. We do that too. We want an answer. God, how are you going to do this? I don't understand. What's the end result? When are we going to get a breakthrough? What are you trying to say? When you ask questions like that, God has an answer. He has a solution. And God can work through somebody that is looking for a solution. Is that you? You want to see lives changed? You want to see uh, this? And, and listen, this is the heart of God. You want to see people delivered and set free? Is that what you want to see? Because when you want to see that, God can work through you. That's being created for the task. When you want to see someone delivered from sin and bondage, delivered from alcohol, drug addiction, promiscuousness, healed in their body, when you want to see that happen, when you want to see people come into the true knowledge of God, when that becomes your desire, guess what? That's God's desire. 
when you want to see people have a right relationship with God, that's God's desire. Believe by faith. That's God's desire. And when you want that, when you begin to ask certain questions, when will the people change? When will they be set free? When are they... He's gonna create he's gonna make you a part of the solution. He can work through you Because what the people need is truth Which is the Word of God they need to hear truth they need to see truth So he can work through you To answer the questions that he actually put in your heart Gideon wasn't just having a random moment about what was going on. He had those moments before. Now it was an opportune time. That God said, you know what? He's ready now. I I I can talk to him now. I can I can meet with him now because the cry of my people have hit my ears and it, I have become attentive to their cry and I see somebody that I can work through. I see somebody who has a compassion for the people. I see somebody. Moses had a compassion for his people, the Hebrew people, once he fully learned and understood that that's where he came from. He knew something just wasn't right the way they were being treated, but something one day transpired in him and it shifted him. And so God said, you know what? I can use you. You were created for this task. Jeremiah the prophet he cried. He cried because the word he had to deliver was not an easy word. And he also cried because he wanted the very best for his people, but yet they conspired against him. He wanted them delivered. He wanted them to turn back to God. But they didn't want that. And, and they, they conspired against him to cause him harm. I tell you, my brothers and my sisters in Christ, those questions that you have when you look at situations and you ask why and you, you say, where is God? Where, where is God? Where is the word that the people need? You are positioning yourself for him to work through you. Because you're saying, where is the word that the people need? Well, he needs a willing vessel in which to deliver such a word. Is it you? My God, what an awesome question on today. It's a personal question. Nobody can answer it but you. So pay attention to what you ask and then take a look at what kind of work you do for the ministry. If you ever wondered, what's my calling? What am I called to do? Pay attention to the kind of questions that you ask concerning life, concerning society, concerning the body of Christ. Pay attention to those type of questions and concerns. There you will find your purpose. There you will find why you were created. It is based off of what's going on in your heart and it's not by chance that those things hit your mind the questioning of those things uh questioning about um who's teaching truth and foundational principles of the word of god that is a concern of mine so guess what i find myself studying and when allowed to teach on the foundation of jesus christ he gave me that desire he put that concern deep down in me. And since I have a concern about it, he created me for that task. Okay, you got a concern about the truth being taught. Well, study to show yourself approved. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And when you are led, teach. 
take a look over uh, in your spare time. Go over to the book of Ju Judges and look at uh, the 6th and 7th chapter talking about Gideon. We're coming to a close for our time on today, but don't forget our lineup is already posted for Wednesday and Thursday. Tomorrow we're going to talk about your conception has a purpose and on Thursday producing in the wilderness. You know that I love you. Have a blessed day.